Have you heard about the figure known as the dying and reviving God? One of the oldest is Osiris from Egypt. Keep watching to learn why. Hello and welcome to World History Encyclopedia. My name is Kelly and today we're going to have a look at the Egyptian god of the underworld and judge of the dead, Osiris. Don't forget, the easiest way to support us is by giving this video a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel so you don't miss out on any new upload. You can also check out our Patreon, which includes cool merch like art prints and t-shirts, which you can find the link for down below. Osiris was known as the King of the Living and the Eternal Lord, since he was the first god born after the universe was created, and then later he was known as the god of the underworld and the lord of the dead. Osiris remained one of the most popular and enduring gods until the decline of ancient Egyptian religion. He was the god of fertility, the afterlife, the dead and resurrection, and in death, the kings of Egypt were associated with Osiris, the lord of the underworld. Osiris was one of the five first gods born in the Egyptian pantheon after the creation of the universe, and was considered the first king of Egypt. Geb, Earth, and Nut Sky had five children, Isis, Osiris, Set, Nephthys, and Horus the Elder. Isis and Osiris wed, as did Nephthys and Set. As the oldest, Osiris was given the role as Lord of the Earth, and as time went on, Set became jealous of his brother's success. For Osiris had turned the uncultured people of Egypt into a cultured group, where everyone was equal and there were plenty of crops. Adding to Set's growing jealousy, his wife Nephthys disguised herself as Isis and had a child with Osiris, Anubis. Set had had enough, so he built a beautiful coffin to the exact size of Osiris, and then he threw a party. At this party, Set put the coffin on display and said whoever fit the best in the coffin could have it as a gift. And when Osiris lay in the coffin, Set closed it up and threw it into the Nile. Osiris floated down the river until he came to a stop at the Phoenician city of Byblos. Here he got lodged in the banks and a tamarisk tree grew around the coffin quickly, entombing Osiris further. The king of Byblos, Melkander, came to the shore and after smelling the sweet scent of the tamarisk tree, he ordered it to be cut down and brought to his palace to be used as an ornamental pillar. There Osiris stayed and eventually died, trapped inside the coffin and pillar, until Isis, disguised as an old woman, came to Byblos looking for Osiris. Isis asked the king and queen if she may be the nursemaid for their young sons. When Isis was caught by the mother, Queen Astarte, bathing the youngest son in fire in order to make him immortal, and the queen rebuked her supposed nursemaid harshly, Isis revealed herself as a goddess and was offended by this rebuke. She requested the pillar as an offering in exchange for her mercy in forgiving the insult. Isis cut her husband out of the tree and laid him in a swampy region of the Nile Delta. When she left him to gather some herbs to restore him to life, she left Nephthys in charge to watch over him. By this time, Set knew that Osiris was back in Egypt, and so he managed to draw Osiris's location from Nephthys. When he found Osiris, he cut his body up and scattered the parts all across Egypt and threw the penis in the Nile. Isis was horrified when she returned to her hiding spot, but quickly began collecting the parts of Osiris. The only part she couldn't retrieve was his penis, which was eaten by a fish. Isis was able to revive Osiris and, in the form of a kite, became impregnated and gave birth to their son, Horus. Because Osiris was incomplete, he wasn't able to rule the earth anymore, so he descended from earth to the netherworld and became the lord of the underworld and judge of the dead. Afterwards, Isis raised Horus as a single mother, hiding him from Set in the Delta, and was helped by other goddesses such as Selkat. When Horus reached maturity, Set and Horus battled for supremacy and rule of the land, and most accounts of the myth say Horus defeated Set and restored order to the chaos Set had unleashed. Horus then became the king as his father's successor, with Isis as his advisor. 
The myth of Osiris touches on many of the aspects that were important to the social and religious aspects of the culture, including harmony, order, gratitude, and eternal life. The rebirth of Osiris was associated with the Nile River, with Osiris's death honoured as the Nile receded, and his rebirth celebrated as the river rose in flood to irrigate the land. Osiris is often depicted with green or black skin to symbolise both decay in death and rebirth as evidenced by the fertile banks of the Nile and regeneration of the land. The succession to the throne from father to son, as in the story of Osiris and Horus, informed the policy of divine kingship in ancient Egyptian society, where the son of the king was associated with Horus and the deceased king with Osiris. The cult of Osiris was already established by the end of the 5th dynasty around 2345 BCE and lasted for around 2000 years, which isn't surprising since Osiris was among the most popular gods and the most enduring alongside his sister wife Isis. Due to the part of the myth concerning Osiris's scattered body, many sites all around Egypt claimed to have once held parts of the god, and so Osiris had many cult centres and was worshipped in a number of places. From the Old and Middle Kingdom of Egypt, we have evidence of a festival of Osiris held at Abydos, where the cult statue of Osiris was carried from the temple to his traditional tomb. Osiris also had a mystery cult, and much like the name suggests, the rites and rituals practiced as part of this cult are a mystery. There is a chance that these mystery rites may have developed from the festival at Abydos, which celebrated the promise of eternal life to those who believed in the god. We even have a hymn which survives called the Great Hymn to Osiris, which begins. Hail to you, Osiris, Lord of Eternity, King of Gods, of many names, of holy forms, of secret rites in temples. Festivals honouring Osiris and eventually funerals for important males included the call and response performance ritual known as the Lamentations of Isis and Nephthys, during which two virtuous maidens would take the role of the goddesses to call Osiris back to life and walk among them. This invocation was thought to cause Osiris to live again and his presence would bless believers as well as the land with prosperity, as well as assuring them of eternal life. Osiris is therefore referred to by modern day scholars as a dying and reviving god figure, one who goes down into the underworld and returns to life for the salvation of the people. The Osiris cult eventually merged with that of Isis and became the most popular religion not only in Egypt but as far north as Britain, and Isis's cult became the major challenger to the new religion of Christianity. If the Roman Emperor Constantine the Great had not championed Christianity, one might be seeing temples to Isis and Osiris today instead of churches. Does Osiris remind you of any other god from other cultures' pantheon? Let us know which god and why down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any new uploads. This video was brought to you by World History Encyclopedia. For more great articles and interactive content, head to our website via the link below. World History Encyclopedia is a non-profit organisation, so if you'd like to support our work, you can hit the pop-up in the top corner of the screen, or you can follow the link to our Patreon, which you will be able to find down below. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you soon with another video.